74 people in this country are currently in prison and will never come out. They were given full life tariffs. Why was an Al-Qaeda terrorist who admitted his offences not one of those people? Well, because he was made subject to a sentence that meant that he was released automatically after halfway through his term. That was the decision made by our independent court. Uh, it's therefore incumbent upon uh, the justice system to uh, then apply uh, license conditions and to supervise offenders in this category. As you said, there's 74 people who are uh, out on license, and that's why over the weekend, Work has been going on at no, pace to look about, at each case. Hang on, I wasn't talking about people out on licence, one of whom I believe has been arrested overnight because they found that one of the 74 convicted jihadists who've been released actually was also allegedly plotting a new terror attack. That's a separate issue. I'm talking about the fact that in this country, we lock up a lot of people for the rest of their lives, from the Yorkshire Ripper to, you know, the people that killed Lee Rigby yeah. and we so on. People whole we, we do this all the time. Right for bad people plotting bad things. I'm just trying to work out how it could be that somebody could be part of an Al-Qaeda gang who are caught plotting to uh, create terror camps, who want to blow up the US Embassy in London, blow up the, the London Stock Exchange and kill Boris Johnson, why those people were given such derisory sentences. Well, that was the sentencing regime that applied at the time. Uh, and since that time, we have been toughening up the regime to stop and reduce the automatic early release provisions. And indeed, the Prime Minister has announced a further review, which uh, I will be uh, helping to lead, to make sure that sentencing is as robust as possible, because public protection, as you imply, has to be at the heart of all well, of this. So We've got if to it's, get that if right. it's at the heart, then, why has it taken the Tories 10 years? to well, actually uh, do anything serious about this? Why has it taken the murder of these two brilliant young people to actually concentrate your minds? Why are the Tories who've been in government for nearly a decade, why have they been so lax in this area? Well, we took action, as I've said, after uh, the, this particular incident to uh, end the use of automatic early release for this type of sentence. It's too late, we isn't it? It's too late for these two people. Well, why look, is it, I, again, I ask you, why is it I, taken... Why is, if you feel this strongly about it and it's going to be at the heart of your government, why has it taken the Conservatives ten years to wake up to what is the bleeding obvious, which is actually we face a unique unprecedented threat from jihadists and that we know they are planning atrocities and yet we have let loads of them back onto the streets. We've welcomed them back from war zones where they've been in combat against our troops. We don't know where these people are. We're not monitoring them properly. And guess what? One of them goes and kills people. It's not a genius working this out. This is the bleeding obvious that was always going to happen. And it's happened on your watch and you've been in charge of this for 10 years. So this all, oh, it's all Labour's fault. It's a load of baloney, isn't it? You've had 10 years to put it right. Well, that, that's not correct. The uh, particular sentencing regime that was used in this case was indeed one that was passed by a Labour government. Since that time, we took action to end this type of sentence in terms of automatic release. We extended those provisions on two occasions. Uh, and indeed, before uh, this atrocity was committed, I'd already, with the Prime Minister, announced plans to further end automatic early release at halfway right, for a range of, appeal, of serious of and appeal, violent sentences. So we were Mr. ahead Mr. of the Curve. Mr Button, the Court of Appeal had an option not to put this guy's sentence down from indeterminate and they chose not to take that option. It wasn't a Labour Party decision to take that decision. That decision was taken by Lord Leveson in charge three of the Court of, of Appeal judges. appeal into this. He had three of them, but he was in charge of it. And they reduced the sentence so that they gave him a determinate sentence. So is your position that that decision was wrong? Well... The court applied the law at that time, and our judges are independent. They had an option not to, uh, not to give him the a determinate sentence. So was it wrong? Was the court of appeal well, wrong? Well, I think that the system that applied then was not robust enough. And I don't think it's right of me to start intervening in particular judicial decisions. But what I will say is that for that period, and this particular offence was committed in late 2010, uh, for that particular period, as a result of the changes that have been made to uh, introduce automatic early release back in 2008, we've ended up in this situation where this man was released automatically without the 
parole board being able to do well, and anything why, about Buckland, it. Well, and why did the parole board not do anything about it? Because in his judgment, we have just spoken to uh, the QC, Michael Mansfield, who told us that Lord Leveson said when he made his judgment, there should be a parole board hearing before Usman Khan was released. No, uh, Lord Leveson was referring. Lord Justice Leveson was referring to another defendant. There were eight defendants in that case. He was not referring to Khan when it came to uh, this issue. The parole board had no role because it was an automatic early release provision Why introduced in 2008. Why does the parole board not have a role when a convicted terrorist is released? Well, we think they should in every case. Right. In this case, this they happened, didn't because so of the law that Labour had introduced. Why didn't you... Well, hang on. You've had enough time to make sure that parole boards do get involved before automatic yes. early release. Yes, and we've done that. We changed the law to make sure that the parole board did have a role. But this offence was committed under the old law, and, of course, the courts have to apply the law as it stood at the time of the offence. It can't go back retrospectively so anybody and apply currently new convict, laws so anybody, to old offences. anybody who faces early release right now and was convicted under the previous legislation... You can't now say that the parole board should have a look at them before they're released. So That's how right. many convicted terrorists are going to get early release right now? without the parole board overseeing it. Well, that's right. That's what I'm looking at now. I'm not just looking at people who are out on release. I'm looking at people who are due to be released and to understand precisely what the position is with them. I'm having a meeting today about that with officials. Right, so if you can because... do that now, how come that hasn't been done over the last 10 years? If you have the power to do that... You've left no, no, it quite no, let late. Me, no, Suzanne, let me explain again. The law has to be applied at the time of the offence. At that, this, These offences and offences like this committed years ago will uh, have the old law applied to them. There's so nothing I can I'm do to retrospectively change the law. how many terrorists convicted under the previous legislation face early automatic release and the parole board can do nothing about it? Well, that's what I'm looking at today, because I want to make sure that if there is to be release, that the licence conditions are as stringent as possible... And this is what I'm saying. ..because public protection if has to be at the heart you can look at it today, it. clearly there has been an opportunity for you to, or your equivalent, to have looked at it over the past ten years. If it's something that you can act on, you've left it very late. No, we changed the law again. I, I'll repeat myself. We changed the law in 2012 to introduce extended determinate sentences that the parole board would be involved with. We further extended that in 2014. And, and indeed, before this, before the election, I'd announced further uh, uh, changes to bring the parole board into the mix when it comes to the release of serious violent okay. offenders. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. There are 74 convicted jihadists who've been released. One of them was arrested overnight because he was found to be allegedly plotting a new terror attack. Where are the other 73? Well, we know where they are uh, and we know that they are being seen regularly. One of them is going to be recalled to custody already. Uh, I've already asked officials and they've been working through the weekend on all the cases that we, 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 we are discussing. I'll be looking again today at those cases and uh, making sure that, first of all, if there is any breach, that people are recalled to prison and that, secondly, the licence conditions are as stringent as humanly possible in order to minimise the, the is, repeat of an atrocity such as the one we the saw The truth on is that in the last ten years, you've taken 20,000 policemen off the streets, you've slashed prison officer numbers dramatically... Part privatised the probation, probation service. service is creaking at the seams, with probation officers also dramatically reduced. This is an accident, a tragedy, a disaster. All these things that are happening were always going to happen, weren't they? Uh, no, this is nothing to do with probation reforms. The National Probation Service, the police, the security services all work together in order to supervise this particular group of uh, terrorists. Uh, terrorists are a particularly manipulative and dangerous part of our society. Mercifully, they are a small number, but they pose a real threat to us. We've seen an appalling manifestation of that on Friday, which has devastated us all, which is why we're redoubling our efforts to make sure that our society is as safe why, as possible. Why why, if, why, given what has happened with Usman Khan, why, given that he clearly pulled the wool over everybody's eyes, he was somehow de-radicalised and wasn't, why is the uh, new government, you, and if you win the election, you'll continue to be the government, why are you not pushing now to have every single al-Qaeda 
and ISIS terrorist who is caught and there's overwhelming evidence of what they were plotting and planning, why are they not given life without parole sentences as 74 other people in this country have been given? Well, the Prime Minister already said yesterday his clear intention to toughen up sentencing for this type of criminal. To 14 um, years. To 14 uh, years. I'm saying to you, why if the Yorkshire Ripper is never allowed out? Why if the killers of Lee Rigby are never going to be allowed out? Why are we even contemplating letting out people like Usman Khan again? Why? Well, we're looking in particular at the range of terrorist defences that are out there and making sure that where serious and death and devastation are contemplated, that sentencing is as tough as possible in order to protect the public. That's the Prime Minister's clear intention. That's what we're going to deliver. Uh, and make no bones about it, when it comes to future uh, offences of this nature, uh, we will be taking an even tougher approach and making sure that the public is protected to the highest possible degree. You're right, Piers. So these people are manipulative. They harbour deep and long-held grudges and hatred, uh, which is why, within our prison system, we're already working to separate and isolate those people who prevent a real danger uh, and are training and retraining our prison staff to spot the early signs of this sort of extremist behaviour. And not just people who are convicted of terrorism offences, but also people who might have committed other offences who pose a, a risk of extremism and the sort of hate that we need to stamp out in our society. All right. Justice Secretary, Mr Buckland, thank you very much indeed for joining us.